Ja'Cory, do you think country artists are smarter than rappers? <laughs> I, I plead the fifth, man. I, I'm just saying because <laughs> this person just broke down basically talking about how rappers aren't moving smart these days. This is inside from an exec. And we're talking about what if you were doing 5 million streams in less than a month? That's what this country artist was doing. And in this clip, he's about to break down exactly how the country artist deal was structured. And there's going to be some things to take from it. So if you want to hear the inside of a real artist deal doing real numbers and want to kind of think about what you might need to ask for or not, this is the clip to watch. That and more on this episode of No Labels Necessary. Y'all check this shit out. There's this country artist that I was in the middle of a conversation with in terms of a deal. Mm -hmm. He, and I want you to tell me what you think. Uh, he did probably about 5 million streams in less than a month on this one song. He had two songs out, wow. right? Okay. And it was it was going probably like 400,000 a week. It's probably now three months out, I think almost at 17, 18 million. 400,000, wow, in a week. That's crazy. That's love nice to see little, it. A nice little bit of momentum. Yeah, love to see it, man. I love that. And he's at 17 million about right now. Go ahead and say how much about how much money. Was that probably 17 million? 17 million, probably somewhere between like 50 and 80K, depending on where, where it's coming from. All right, so this is where he is, all right? About 50 to 80K in, in terms of amount of money. And now let's go further. How much do you think that deal? 7 to 18 million total Streams. or 7 to 18 in three million months. a week? No, 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 total, total right now. Somebody has 17 million streams. They doing uh, about half a million. Is the song good? Are you signing more than one it's, song? It's it's uh, it was for a project. It was you know uh, for that song and another song that he had out. It was just him and so just for one project and those two songs are on it. Yeah, an EP. That question was it good is very important. Yeah, y'all think people don't be caring about good music now? These execs know the difference between good. I got to do this deal to flip this song that's popping because it's doing numbers. But I'm going to look at a song that I know is good differently than I look at a song that's doing numbers that ain't good. Yeah, 100%. How much, how much are they going to own? Uh, 70%. Uh, well, they own the whole thing, but no, it was just a license. It was a license 70%. for, for 70-30. Actually, it was, sorry. It was, it was like 80-20, excuse me, 75-25 for whatever, three years, four years. Is the song good? Mm -hmm. I would say anywhere between 300 to 400K based on you saying the song is good because that means that I can go get I can push this song or put it in certain places and get my money back. Because the song is good. Good music still wins in the end, y'all. All right, there's more to this clip, y'all, but we want to stop for a second and just argue the deal part because he's going to get into some things with the rappers, right? Just some small things on some deals that he personally passed on because with some notable names because of what they were asking for, right? Mm -hmm. People who are considered successful. But let's do this. Just a little thought experiment for the exercise. Corey's going to argue why, yo, that 75K, he should have taken a bigger deal. Ray Daniels basically projected, you know, roughly speaking, he could have taken three to 400K. Mm -hmm. And we've seen, we know people who have been in a position where they could take a 300, 400K and they'll take that or they'll be arguing for more. Mm -hmm. I'm going to argue for the country artist side just for the sake of the exercise and hopefully we get something out of it. You ready? Let's do it. All right. So... Why was his decision busted to go with the 75K? Well, I want to start with, you know, I, I, I did the projections. We can guesstimate somewhere between 50 to 80K already made based on where in the world those streams are coming from, what platforms the streams are on. All right. Because he never said which one. So you've already made the deal amount in three months. It's a new song, right? So we can assume that it's probably going to keep Roughly that same momentum for at least two or three months. So we're talking about possibly another 50 to 80K. Damn near guaranteed, you know what I'm saying, in the next two or three months. And now you would double the deal in, what, a sixth of the time of the amount okay. of the contract it went Because I remember you said a three to four year license. Um, so we're talking about six months you've made, you know, um, you've made just way more in, 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 in less time than what it was going to be. So... There's the argument of like, hey, like you could just not sign a deal and keep all of this money and be in the same position you're about to be in, you know, minus, you know, you could argue the resources, which I feel like you look, the, the look is on your face mm -hmm. like you're about to argue resources. Resources are nice. Resources are nice, you know what I'm saying? But resources, 
Also, well, who don't mo- don't multiple like, point me? Right, right, don't right, multiple bad, point me. My bad, my bad. My bad. Uh, let's stop here, because <laughs> just based off of what you said, <laughs> if I made fifty to eighty k within three months, mm-hmm. all right, I've already made this seventy five thousand dollars that yep. I'm about to get yep. from somebody else, right? And let's be clear, this is a loan, all right? They're not giving me this money, yeah, all right. So, oh, you said alone. Alone, uh, yeah, yeah. They res- so I gotta respect the fact that this is a loan. Let's clarify that when they give you this seventy five k, they give me this seventy five k. This is a loan. This isn't just my money free. Mm-hmm. I gotta pay them back. Yeah. yeah. In the following three months, you said I probably make in this guesstimation fifty to sixty, seventy. All right. In the following three months, so basically I pay that loan back in three months. All right. But your argument is I could have just kept that money. And now I would have had 140K in my pockets, right? But I chose why to go ahead and do this deal. A couple reasons. One, resources are nice, but it's my entry point also into building a bigger and better deal situation. Mm. All right. A lot of you, you know, you hippity hoppity artists, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Y'all take these big numbers and put yourself in a ditch that you can't ever pay back. Yeah. Instead, I prefer to pay the money back. And then when I pay that money back, now I'm scot free. We're good. I'm not stuck in a deal. I can go somewhere else. I can navigate. I'm nimble. And the people that I broke bread with came out happy to. I delivered. And now they're going to have confidence for me to go up. No different than me performing at a small venue. And then the booking agent says, hey, you know what? I'll approve you to be in a 200 cap. I would preview you to be in an 800 cap and you go up the ladder. I'm just creating proofs of concept in a low risk way to keep myself to use the label system without <laughs> ever being trapped by the label system. Come on, bro. I can't. Can I? Can I jump ship and then come back to my ship? <laughs> 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 like I just want to leave like for a sec and then come right back. All right, bro. Come on, come over here, bro. It's nice over here. We got extra room. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I do get that, right? I could I could see an artist in that cuz like like he said, but it, he only had two songs out. So this sounds like a fairly new artist, you know what I'm saying? So right. we also have to account for just general new artist skepticism, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Which is very fair and very valid. You, okay. All of you should have new artist skepticism, okay. right? So I could see him saying like, "Hey, maybe the label did offer 340k." And he's like, "Man, I don't know where the fuck I'm gonna be at. This is only my second song. This shit mm. probably feel lucky. Let me take a small amount to your point that I know I can Cause now if I take a 75k deal, I'm recouped in, in two, three months. And no about. matter what happens after that, yeah, exactly. I'm good. I, I agree with that. I see that. Now, if I come back to my ship mm-hmm. with the resources and building the career, he is an artist with two songs that did 17 million streams in three months. There is not an industry professional in the world right now that, that he, not only he couldn't, I don't think, could get access to, he also will have the funds to be able to hire them. And he is currently hot. We all know how much industry professionals love a hot artist yes. to be able to attach themselves to. Mm-hmm. So it's not too many resources that if he swung his momentum now, he could get access to them. And we could argue, I feel like you're going to artist, you know, artist education. Does he know the things that he needs to get access to to push the ball forward? I want to give this guy the benefit of the doubt and say he he probably watches platforms like ours and, mm. you know what I'm saying, has a mass of certain... Um, level of, of, of music industry knowledge to mm-hmm. so maybe at least know I need to hit the base. Let me get a lawyer, let me get a, a, a publicist, let me get a marketer, let me get a, you know, e-commerce funnel building nigga. Nope. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, <laughs> yeah. And go ahead and set my infrastructure up. Let me get a booking agent, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And a lot of those doors are gonna open for him because like I said, he's, he's hot, bro. He did five million streams in a month. That is a hot artist, bro. And the music industry loves two things. They love profitable artists, and they love hot artists. Mm. He is both of those things, currently. Yo, artists, there's a lot of distributors out there, but if you want a distributor that will take you seriously, not just look at you as a number, then Two Loss is the platform from you. I'm talking about helping you beyond just putting your music on all the DSPs. That's what y'all are supposed to do. Two Loss actually helps you with your money. I'm talking about whoever is a part of the song, Dealing out the splits easily, or more importantly, 
helping, giving you an advance so you can actually create what you need to, whether that's studio time, whether that's your music video, but helping you get money to help fund your career. And most importantly, a lot of these distributors don't really help with the playlisting and things like that unless you are a signed artist. You have some kind of serious deal, but Two Loss has that ability as well. And some of our clients, when they switched over to Two Loss, They've given us shining reviews. Mm -hmm. So check out Two Loss at twoloss.com and make sure you put in the code no label. Again, that is no label, N O L A B E L, and let them know that y'all came from us. It's completely free. Make sure y'all let them know where y'all came from. No label. Let's get back to the episode. Resources do matter, <laughs> education does matter. We can assume that he has the baseline. <laughs> Yeah, we can assume he has the baseline and is going to try to hire some people, but I disagree with the accessibility, like because you can't put but so many people into the situation where it's fruitful for everybody to be able to work. Everybody can't eat off of the same plate, mm -hmm. all right. So he has to select the right people, maybe. But this might be a way of bringing in because he did, they did they never mentioned the distributor, right? Yeah, they didn't. Yeah, right? but this is the way of getting into a situation. But then using it off of one song, I'm using these, well, or two songs, whichever mm -hmm. one it is. I'm yeah. using these couple of songs as a learning situation. I make the money back. So the risk is very low. I pay them back. And it's only for a three year period. I'm making 75 to their 25 off of the profit split. Mm -hmm. So I'm really just paying them 25%. All right. Because I just paid them back money I made. So I kind of delayed the money. I, I, I got it ahead of time. Mm -hmm. All right. I just got the money ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So I, if we think about the, you know, the present value of money, <laughs> <laughs> it is worth more today, sir, than tomorrow. I mean, you're right. You're I'm just right. saying. I can't, I can't, no. So I got it pushed. I got the future today. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Got that money ba paid back easy. 25% got sp split. And now I have whatever those resources are and I can continue to leverage it for that song while I still own the rest of my catalog. And Lord have mercy, it's trickling down to the rest of it. But it's what Russ talks about all the time, and that man looks like he's living pretty wealthy, man. Wealthy and healthy. <laughs> Wait, you talking about Russ or them? Well, no. I guess they all, they all look pretty. They all look pretty wealthy and healthy. Pretty wealthy healthy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about Russ, the artist, as an example <laughs> of, of this young country artist situation. All right? He is... Russ has done the get distribution, right? Instead of a whole label, he's done things with parts of catalog to my knowledge. And then it trickles down to the rest of his catalog mm -hmm. in terms of ownership and deals and however he's played that system, right? I don't know the ins and outs of every single detail of his business, but he's leveraged that. And we know artists who have leveraged that, mm -hmm. right? And the risk, if you're going to do something, all right? We know the, we, cause we know artists who've done a single deal or a two song deal. And it didn't turn out that great either. It did not. It didn't. Right? <laughs> and you would think that's an argument against me, but when we're talking about the very beginning and the value of that learning, right, to actually see behind the doors and I paid, I didn't even really pay my tuition. I got fronted <laughs> some money to go through these doors and then just paid it right back. The education and, and, and shortening that timeline to me is what a lot of this game is worth. Because most of it is knowledge based. This is an industry where it's built on hustle and knowledge. Mm -hmm. And that's why it can get so gritty and political because when it's not based on like a like hardcore on true skill and meritocracy, then there's so many ways to get in. Knowledge and hustle, right? Yep. So if I can shorten the time span in which I can learn, like borrow resources, borrow knowledge any way I can, and I could do it for a low risk like that, then hey man, bravo. <laughs> Bravo! No, I, I, I do agree with that. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think about that perspective. You no, know, to come back, you know, I'm not all the way back on the ship. I'm like on the bridge, <laughs> um, you know, to, to to foray back over there. That's a good point, right? Like I get to basically learn how the major label system works for free. And like I said, he's two songs in, so this is very clearly a fairly new artist. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. his mind is his or her mind is gonna be blown when they get over there. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be shit they didn't even think about. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Um, there are certain label resources that the more I've learned about labels, I've learned are harder to get access to, right? Like you talk about like, you know, certain things like 
I don't want I don't want to say like it's hard to get into but let's say like the world is sinking. Mm -hmm. Labels got a strong grip on that shit. Yes. You know? Not saying you can't do it, you know, none label artists, but if I had to argue between who gonna get that Ford commercial faster, mm -hmm. probably gonna be the artist at Universal Sony or Warner. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> before it, before it, before the any artist, you know what I'm saying? Um, so there are some of these things where you know I think it will be easier to get access to, and the beauty of a label in a lot of scenarios is they are they know and are thinking about things that you wouldn't have ever even thought to think about. Mm. You know yes. what I'm saying? Because sometimes they're having conversations. It's a knowledge gap. You don't know what you don't know. Yeah, exactly. Like <laughs> sometimes they're sometimes they're moving on deals. Yeah. Sometimes they're moving on deals and making partnerships with certain companies that are about to just completely change the way shit happened. You don't you don't even know that's happening. You yes. know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um yeah, no, I can't I can't say that I was about to say. Hold on. I get what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. I'll I'll say it this way. <laughs> I got you. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> if I know Hmm. NFTs are about to change the game. Mm -hmm. And let's pretend they actually did change the game in the timeline people pretended. And this is six months before NFT is come in and change the game. And I'm doing a partnership with the biggest NFT company in the world. They got $3 billion they're about to put behind it. You, random indie artists, have no idea. Mm -hmm. But I have... All the inside information because I'm doing a direct partnership. I've They're reaching out to top. me because I got all the assets. I have all the IP. Mm -hmm. They're going to need to do their thing. So now I can position it to be in the best position for when that industry change occurs. Yeah, exactly. Right? I can I can set you up for a bag that you was, didn't even know existed. You didn't know it was available. Yeah. And there's many versions of that. The NFT thing, you know, y'all are aware of that and that didn't happen that way. But just pretend like there are companies because it's happens plenty of times, the companies are always going to come to the place with the leverage, right? Especially when we're talking about unlocking in the music industry, usually they want to do deals with mm -hmm. the IP. This one partner who's going to unlock a huge catalog mm -hmm. that instantly makes my uh, platform valuable, yep. right? So that's why I oh, hope well, Apple goes, to, not Apple, uh, Spotify, go to three people and then bam, things unlock and that's most of the music in the world, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Now, first of all, you like the air conditioning over here on this boat, don't you? <laughs> the air conditioning? Yeah, crazy. you know, you got air conditioning down low. Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all don't got it inside on y'all boat, huh? No, nah, chill out, bro. <laughs> chill out, bro. Because on my boat, my boat of, of independence, what we have is grit. Mm -hmm. What we have is determination. What okay. we have is is a, is a sparkling um, zest for life mm -hmm. that's going to drive us and fuel us forward into, into areas unknown. You know what drives and fuels us for? Fuel. <laughs> Oil. <laughs> well, that's nice. That's nice. <laughs> I think this independent artist, this country <laughs> artist, made a great decision for him. And I think that is the point that they're making. Let's play this last bit of the clip, too, so we don't get too far off it, so y'all can kind of hear what he's referring to in these deals and how execs are thinking as well. A young man from Austin, Texas, was asking for $75,000. That's good. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, John. Amazing. Awesome. My point is, if it was a rapper. A million. And again, that's why when I say I, I passed on Ice Spice and I passed on this and I passed on that, it was because I couldn't justify the numbers. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, what our community does is we try to take advantage. We think that this is the, I'm going to get rich. Mm -hmm. No, this is the, the, the first or second or third step to get there. Mm -hmm. Right? Let me help you. Ooh, I'm glad he said that. The short-term mentality. And we train, especially the hip-hop drama, to think that this way. It's programmed to think this way. It's the hit-a-lick mentality. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking I'm hitting a lick and getting over on them, not realizing I'm digging a hole for myself, right? I hit a lick, got this quick 300000 got this quick million. The guy in the background, I think he said a hip-hop artist would ask for four to five million. That's what I think he said. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Ray Daniels just doing some quick calculations. He was like, oh, fair enough deal, three to four hundred thousand. All right? But this guy passed on deals with hard artists. Why? Because what I've told artists before, you can do deals and, and negotiate however much you think you, you can. Right? But what you're negotiating to it's not 
charm and charisma that's being used to get more money than you you're worth and get done and get over on somebody. You know what's happening? What you're negotiating for is to get everything that you can get. And when, I know it sounds like a nuance, like, yeah, of course, that's what you're getting. No. What I mean by that is the accounting has a number that they can go up to. This is hard numbers that they're looking at. The person you're talking to, right, doing a deal with, they get told, hey, you know, you can do a deal somewhere in this range. They, if they really like you, they're willing to go up and up and up as high as they can. All right, if they really like you or if they really feel like you're negotiating hard and right, we're willing to figure it out. But when they report back to the accounting, accounting, Accounting's black and white. Yeah, they don't care about none of that. They don't even know who you are. They don't even understand who your like your music. The person you're talking to might actually really rock with you and want you there, but they cannot go over the number. Mm -hmm. The number is the number. There's more artists out there, man. Statistically, like that, that's how accounting is thinking. Like, yeah, well, what's the big deal? Like, okay, this this guy, uh, whoever, insert great artist name that you think is great. Uh, no, that number doesn't make sense. So you're negotiating to get the max worth there and you're just fighting to figure out what that number is. That's what I, I look at it mm -hmm. as, right? Mm -hmm. So even when you think you're getting over and a savant negotiating this great deal, in a lot of these cases, it's not, right? You're just un unearthing your worth in that label's eyes. And on the other side, at the same time, you're putting yourself in a worse position or a harder position to get out of that seems great in the short term, but it fucks up your flexibility. Yeah, nah, you just hey, you just dropped the gem too, man, because that is the silent enemy that a lot of artists don't even think about or know exists, is the finance department at the label. <laughs> 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 so uh, many times they think it's the label owner yeah. or the A&Rs or the head of whatever department. No, it's the, it's the finance team, bro. The finance team does not give a fuck about none of that shit, bro. <laughs> they don't care. Their job is to make sure the label is profitable at the end of the year, and they gonna step on next if they need to. They gonna kill dreams if they need to to make yeah. sure that goes, because that's how their job gets secure. It's exactly. making sure we, the books are good and we are at the end of the year. So yeah, no, nah, that's that's something, yeah, bro, that was a bar, bro. That's, bro. And look, you know, we're imagining <laughs> this huge person who's, you know, puppeteer over everything and what and try to, you know, push and pull has this agenda. Nah, finance department, not that. I'm not saying those people don't exist. Finance department, no, nah, it's just a regular person working their yeah, nine to five. So. I'm looking at numbers. Does it check out or not? It's not malicious. It's business. Business. Yeah. <laughs> I, it, it's, it's so simple in that way. It's so simple in this way. This math does not work out. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Zero emotion attached. Yeah. And the and the finance team has been burning. You gotta think, man, a lot of these like finance people at labels have been there for a long time. That's mm -hmm. that's probably one of the more secure jobs in, yeah. in places like this, right? And they've seen people like you come and go. They've seen overzealous A and Rs that really believe in somebody mm -hmm. and fought for them and that shit didn't work out. So they're burned and they're a silent voice. You know what I'm saying? They don't like. Do we, tell me one person that cares about what the finance person and the label has to say, other than nice. the execs of the label. Only Get, time you're coming to me is when the deal gets made or new mm -hmm. money, but I don't have any say on what to do after that. Mm -hmm. Yep. So this is my only time. <laughs> the stakes are high, <laughs> and I get the, the 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 brunt of the blame at the end of the year if that shit don't work out. Like uh, I now yeah. I, now it's like, damn, you let the A and R make that deal. That's crazy. <laughs> It's like, nah, that nigga really believed, bro. He had this this twinkle in his eye, like he just knew this 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 guy girl was gonna be Drake. And it's like, but you you approve that? You approve that deal? It's crazy. All you right. getting persuaded by twinkles now? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So we want to know what y'all think about this episode. Hopefully, that was helpful in terms of explaining some of the psyche of the deal uh, structures and why people go one way or another, and why taking most money that you can get. Is not the best way to go many times over, in my opinion. Um, like I, you know, we we had our positions that we had to take for the exercise, but I truly do believe that the best way is to over time, if you have confidence, it takes confidence that you're actually gonna have a career and you're not just here for the moment. Yeah. Right? If you have confidence, you're building a career. Like take those small steps again and again and again and just get new deals and never have to stress out about paying somebody back. 
and leave it at that. Yeah, now I wanted to be very clear this was an exercise before people start, you know, calling me stupid in the comments or crucifying me for not having a long term mentality. But I, I do agree with that position. I think yeah. it was smart that he asked for a lower amount. Like like you said, bro, he, he basically made sure the hole that he's in is, is one that he can just step out of Facts. pretty quickly. And then like you said, you get all the benefits, you get the learning experience. You really can't be mad at that no matter no matter how it goes. So, can't be mad. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey man. Low risk. <laughs> High reward in this um, occasion, in my mentality, I'm down. <laughs> On this occasion, in my opinion, <laughs> this is yet another episode of No Labels Necessary. I'm Brad Man Sean. And I'm Corey. And we out. Peace. Watch the next video.